All right, here we got the new retrievable pocket rocket setup that we got made here. Um, quickly, I'm gonna show you guys how to set it up, how to remotely install it, and what configurations we can use this particular retrievable one in. All right, so let's get started. So, first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this, set it on the ground. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my throw line before I make my throw. Or I can also do this after I make my shot by pulling all the throw line through and fishing it in the orientation I want. Obviously, that's not the most ideal, but that is one way you can do it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and lace this throw line in the configuration of friction that I want. I can either go through two rings. I can even set it up with just one ring. For this configuration, I'm going to go with three just to show you that we can get the rope up there and through with the maximum amount of friction. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, starting from the bottom. I want my throw line to come out at the very top ring every time. We don't wanna go in through the top and come out at the bottom. We wanna come out through the top ring every time. Okay, so once we got that in, I'm gonna go ahead and lay that on the ground. And then I'm going to tie my throw ball back on. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get my throw line installed in the tree. And then we'll be right back with the next step. A few moments later. All right, so now I got my throw line installed up at my crotch there that I want to install it. Um, ideally, with this device, we want to find a nice, wide, big, open crotch. That way, so everything get through. Tighter crotches, this, this device just won't really get through there as well. So best to get a nice, wide, open spot and nice, strong rigging point. All right, so once we get that set up, I'm going to go ahead and lay out my pocket rocket retrievable and I'm gonna make sure that the uh, that the rings and the 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 ring here are both kind of facing each other that way we're not getting twisted up or anything like that and next step what I'm gonna do I'm gonna drop my throw line through here I'm gonna retie my throw ball back on here okay so sometimes if you have a bigger throw ball That'll be enough to block that ring. But in this situation, it's a little bit of a small throw ball. So what I do is I'll just grab a bigger carabiner to block it so it doesn't pass through. Okay, so now once we got that, we'll go ahead and start pulling our device up. I'm gonna be pulling directly on the line that is on that steel ring, okay? And I wanna try to just keep my throw line organized as I go. So, once we get closer up to that crotch, I'm gonna grab the other leg of the throw line just so it doesn't get too much momentum and come down. I'm gonna keep pulling down until I get it relatively even. And then once I get it here, I'll go ahead and let this throw ball all the way to the ground. All right, so now what we're gonna do is get this rope attached and fish it through and we'll be right back. 2,000 years later. All right, so now that we got that installed up top there, um, what we're gonna do is, got a little wind here, so bear with me. I had to untwist my throw line, but hopefully in ideal situations, you guys don't have that problem. So once, once I get here, I'm gonna go ahead and take my rigging line, and I'm going to get that installed onto the throw line. Now it's very important that we have plenty of half hitches on here because we want this rope to come up nice and straight so it can get through those rings. So I'm going to do a lot of half hitches on it to help keep this a little bit stiff, especially toward the end of it to pass the line through. So I'm going to go almost all the way up to the end of that rope. That'll probably be my last one right there. And you can see how I got it right toward the end of the rope, okay? All right, so... Again, I got some wind, so bear with me here. So now I'm going to pull from this end of the throw line that's going through the three rings, okay? So once we get it up there, what we'll do is we got to give it a nice good pop. You might kind of have to shimmy your rope back and forth, but it's, it's important to get it through all three rings is just to give it a nice good pop and consistent pull, okay? So right here I'm going to get it, you know, anywhere from four to six inches away from that big steel ring, and I'm gonna give it a big pop, okay? And see right there, we got it through all three rings. 
and then I'm gonna bring that all the way back down to the ground, okay? Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, well, when you put it up there, it's backwards. But this is actually the way you wanna set it up, ideally, to be able to get the rope through. So once you get the rope up there, now what's gonna happen is this end of the rope that you pulled through down to you, this is where you're gonna be working off the ground where you're gonna be rubbing, running your rope from, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and pull all this up and we're gonna pull this up to our climber or whoever's up there and get it to where we're going. And that's gonna be our working end of the rope and this is gonna be our running end of the rope. And then as far as retrieval goes, We'll go ahead and show that. So I'm gonna pull all this rope through real quick and I'll be right back to show you the retrieval. One eternity later. All right, so now that we're done with our work, we've done everything we need to do. We're gonna go over the retrieval here. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, each kit is gonna come with a large red retrieval cone. The yellow one does work, but it is a little bit on the side where once the ring gets worn out a bit, it could slide through. So we recommend using the red large retrieval cone. So we'll go ahead and place that on our rope just with a nice girth hitch. Let's see. So we'll just do one girth hitch just because this rope won't go all the way around. We want to get that nice and tight so that way it doesn't slip. And now I'm going to go ahead and pull this all the way up and see that cone will catch. And then we can go ahead and pull the whole thing out. And now it's retrievable. All right. So that's gonna be it for the retrieval. And I'm gonna show you guys another orientation that we can use this in as well. All right, so there's one last orientation that you can run this device in. Um, so I will say, going for first, that this, this orientation you cannot set up from the ground. You're gonna have to set it up in the tree, but it is still retrievable from the ground. Um, if you haven't really used retrievable rigging devices like this too much, I would highly suggest you get a little more experience with it before trying to mess with this orientation. But I'll go ahead and show you guys. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna start with taking our rope and going through the bottom ring first. And then I'm gonna come out at the top ring. And then I'm gonna place a nice big stopper knot. For the sake of the video here, I'm just gonna do a quick double overhand block that off okay so once you get it up there what I can do now is I can take a bite of rope and pass that through the ring and now we can run a span rig off of this one single rigging point or have a two to one mechanical advantage however when you pull this back up to your climber or back up to the tree you must have a carabiner placed in the belly of the rope Otherwise, if you don't, this rope will pass through and the block will fall out of the tree. So that is an absolute must if you're gonna do this method. Um, so that, that's one of the main things with this. This is a great orientation if you're trying to get set up to get some extra pull on something using the GRCS and you need some extra mechanical advantage, advantage way up in a tree, anything like that. But just make sure we got that carabiner in the belly of the rope so it doesn't pass through. All right, so for the retrieval now, all you simply have to do is pull this bottom leg of the rope, pull it all the way through, and then once that bite passes through, I got my tail and my knot stuck in there. You wanna make that tail shorter, obviously. Um, once you get that all the way through, we can just go ahead and pull the device out and it falls right out of the tree. So that's it for the span rig orientation. 